questions that you, the learning really begins, the realizing, I should say. Um, so just collecting a bunch of data and being a keyboard jockey isn't gonna change your lives. And I think that's why I've changed so much um, is primarily because I apply constantly. I'm constantly applying more and more, try this, try that, try the next thing, and then seeing how it affects my life. I, I, then the time I'd asked them yesterday, which surprised me because they're all advanced students that have done a lot of work, and I think two of them had done the, the exercise, the rest hadn't out of the room. It was only a small group. But um, in the time that they went to lunch and came back, I had the same exercise I gave them, I had done personally more times than I could count while I was at lunch. It was a simple exercise, so it surprised me. I was like, do you realize where you guys could be right now if you had had this mentality right from the beginning? I was thinking to them. If you would apply to the level I applied at lunch on your, in your personal life, where would your life be today? How much bigger would you be? How much would you have, have changed in your life? Where would you have grown to? And that's the biggest problem I see. And we're constantly trying to figure out how to get you guys to actually apply the material we teach. To actually follow through with it and not just think about it. Not get excited because I said this just now and say, yeah, I'm going to apply it and then forget in an hour. Forget at lunch. Forget tomorrow. Forget when you go home. But to actually apply. Josh was bringing that up yesterday. Like, what do we need to say to get them to remember to actually do it? To actually follow through with their commitments. And that's the hardest thing is to get you guys to go actually do the fucking work. You guys are looking for the next thing I'm gonna say to write down, but you're not doing the fucking work. And I'd rather have you doing 80% practice on one or two good techniques and way less information. And you would have way more growth. Right? What well, you guys are looking is for 80% information and maybe, if you're lucky, 20% practice. And that's, that's not real practice. And so I want that to resonate today because that, that point was really hammered home yesterday when I, when I saw the mastermind students do what they did. I'm going to hammer it home for them. That's why I'm talking about it. Because when I saw them do what they did, the, the question in my mind still right now is where could each of them have been if they had actually applied at the level I applied or the level Josh applied or the level Anthony applied. And, 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 and Anthony was up and down for a while, right? But he really applied. When he applied, he applied. You know, the, I, th I think you were down when, that first day when you ran home. That, that's the only time. But then he came back and he would, he would spend all day. He said, I want to approach women. I have no money. I'm just take a jar of change, put it in the coin machine, and spend all day at the beach approaching women. Get five instant dates in one day. That's some fucking applying, right? But not just with that, all the little stuff, too, that builds up to that, all the awareness stuff that allows you to be a really good connecting machine, to be able to look at somebody and actually drop in with them, to be able to ground your body, all these little subtleties. And when you start mastering those subtleties, like what is proactive, reactive? What is the container? What is penetrating energy? What is, and how do you feel that in your body as a, as a muscle memory, not something you have to think about to apply? And that, a lot of that's in the book I, uh, I wrote. And those basics of that are in the book. And so I'll take a concept, like one of those simple concepts, and I might spend an afternoon applying one simple concept so that I can get it into my muscle memory so I don't have to think about it. So when I look at somebody, I can look at them and into them because I can feel the grounding, I can feel the connection, I can feel the flow of energy because I spent a lot of time developing that. 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%. And then suddenly there's a quantum leap and you're like, and everybody's like, wow, look, he changed overnight. No, he didn't. He just didn't, he, he was doing these little things over and over and over and over and over again. It didn't look like anything was happening. And then boom, there was a big change. And you're like, oh, look how much he changed. It, he was, there was consistency leading up to that explosion of change. It's like, it's like you don't see the bulk of what a seed is doing under the ground before it sprouts. It's digging roots and it's, 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 it's anchoring itself into the dirt. It has to fight its way 
up through the dirt at some point, down and then up, it has to first find itself out of the shell. The shell has to rot, has to break free, has to dig down, root itself. Then it starts going up. And so, let's say that there's concrete around in, in between the root, like a, a sidewalk. It will find a way either through or around or push that fucking concrete up eventually through consistency. And then it will sprout, drop other seeds, and in mi- over time, not much is happening, but eventually you'll have a whole fucking forest. And you only got so many years on this planet to work. That's called the eighth wonder of the world, compounding interest, to work that compounding interest. And when you start, stop, kind of try, half-ass try, you're, you're slowing that compounding down and even stopping it and starting all the way from the beginning again, which is even worse. So if you want to be your full potential, you need to really apply these principles this weekend. Every break and learn, use hindsight, fuck up a lot. You learn through your fuck-ups, you learn through your failures, you learn through falling down. Failure's your best teachers. And that's another simple principle that a lot of guys don't practice. They don't go out to fail, they go out to succeed. Okay, and it's great that you succeed, but it's through the letting go of the fear of failure that you actually start to explode. You actually start to grow and become the best version of yourself. And so you have to get good at failure to be successful. If you're afraid of failure, you'll never, you'll never really fully succeed because you'll never fully put yourself out there because you don't want to fail. My favorite is I get a client up here with a model uh, and you'll see, you might even see it happen this weekend. I'll call it out when it does. And he'll be looking at the model. He'll feel the tension. He'll feel the stress. He doesn't want to fail and he'll step out and he'll be like, wow, I really need to practice this. And think about what I just said. <laughs> And he go, yeah, yeah, I, I, you know, I, and then he'll start giving me all the reasons why he's not good at it. And I'm like, well, why don't you just practice right now and be bad at it? And then you'll figure it out through practice, right? Instead of stopping over here to talk about it and not take action. Why, you have this op- golden opportunity to be on the stage under tension doing this work right now and you want to step out and talk about it. You want to step out and analyze it. And that, that analyzation process is the very problem itself. Okay? So I wanted to hit you hard with this this weekend and just kind of let it marinate. So the rest of the weekend, if a coach asks you to apply something, you try it, even for 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Take it super serious. The next thing I want you to realize is don't half-ass apply anything. Can you... You're, if you half-ass apply something, you're going to get half-ass results. And then you're going to swear it doesn't work. Imagine me approaching a girl half there. Like, I don't know if she's going to reject me, so I'm going to do it half-ass. You know, hi, my name's Brian. I, I don't want to bother you, but, um, you know, I just thought you were really pretty. And then I'm going to get rejected. See, that approaching shit doesn't work. You can't approach women. They all reject you. You got her to reject you by being half ass A half-ass approach is going to give you half-ass results, and you'll never know what a full, committed approach will do. And that's true with everything in life. Imagine lifting weights half-ass. What kind of results are you going to get? And then you're going to swear lifting weights doesn't grow muscles. Ten years later, I still didn't grow any fucking muscles. Why? Let's see, this weightlifting shit doesn't work. Okay? So you got to commit. So there's a lot of principles that go, simple principles that go into success. 1% rule, fully committing, you know, uh, apply, applying on a regular basis, which is kind of along the, the, full, the 1% rule, but all of this really counts. Uh, being good at failure. These are all really important points, right? And I always say, the average student comes in and they want to get good at women, but they don't get good at changing their subconscious mind and learning. They don't get good at changing the, the way they view the world, the global belief systems about how to change. And because of that, they make the change process really fucking hard. And, and then they sit and they want to study, look for the next magic bullet and the next magic bullet and the next magic bullet. And they haven't got down to the business of actually doing the work. 
been looking for that one thing I'm going to say. And then you guys will come to me with this. This is another one. You write down something. This one is huge. Oh, my God. This one, and you think that's going to be the next magic bullet. And I'm like, it'll help you to change a little bit more. But it's not one thing that's going to help you change. It's a ton of 1% that are going to cause a radical shift in your life. So if you found that one thing, release the attachment to it as fast as you can and stop trying to turn it into a technique. Because guys love to turn shit into techniques, right? Because the technique will fail you once you've mastered the technique in your mind, mentally. Then you're going to have to change it again, right? So what are the principles I just uh, uh, talked about, right? Let's see if you guys are listening. Number one, what? Give me one of them. One, one percent rule. Okay. Love your failure. Yeah, I always say that. Love failure. Consistency. Fail a lot. Uh, ga the game is played in rejection and failure, right? Before I get to the next one, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write these down. Just these are all. Um, because failure is probably one of the most important pieces, you can't do any of this without failure. So these are things I, I, I look at all the time, right? Hopefully you can read that. But the game is played in rejection and failure. Fail a lot. Love failure. Go out and get rejected a lot and learn to have fun with it. Laugh at it. Have stories. Tell you. Like you two as brothers, oh, did you see the way she rejected me? And then you guys will have that story the rest of your life. Said, Man, she threw that drink on me. I've never seen a girl throw a drink on a guy. But, you know, it would be fucking hilarious if it happened, right? And that's when you're going to really begin to learn. Okay? That's when you're really going to begin to learn. When you got your bros and you can all laugh at your failures. Because men bond and grow through challenge. Okay? Okay, so we have the 1% rule, love, failure. What else? You need to slide it over? Okay, so w what did I talk about? Take action on a regular basis, yeah. And fully commit. Which is kind of along the 1% rule, but... And that the really the important part is fully committing in that action too. And um, learning learning from hindsight or realizing, I should say, but because you get realizations from hindsight. Okay, so you learn or realize from hindsight. So realizations are like, wow, I did that, this and this happened. Oh, now I get it. But you don't fully get it when it's explained to you logically. You get it by doing. Okay, and then, um, and then I fully committed is actually, a, it's its own separate one too, but uh, So I'll put it here too, because it's that important. They're all that important. Okay? I gotta practice writing really bold and clear for these for the camera and shit. So. This one that says rejection, the one what's the line that says rejection? Love reject love failure? What about it? Uh, uh oh, that should be the game. I left out the word game. The game. Okay. I say that to myself all the time. The game is played in rejection and failure. If you want to get really good with women, you have to be really good with rejection. You can't stop and try to get past rejection, uh, not get rejected. You have to be good at being rejected because it's a polarity. To be good at getting girls, you have to be good at getting rejected because the best get rejected the most. Guys that say they can get any girl have been rejected more than any guy on the planet. If it's true, if there's any truth to that at all, because no guy can get any girl. And every guy that's, I've seen a million coaches say on stage, 
oh yeah, teach this and you can get any girl. And then off stage they'll tell me, yeah, you, nobody can get any girl. They just like to say that. It's impossible. Everybody is different, okay? You get the right girls for you. And you're gonna get rejected a lot. Um, you, you can come around this way. Yeah. Or just sit there for a bit. I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll talk later. Um, okay, so any questions about this? Nope? Well, good. So welcome to the Integrated Man Summit. And uh, so I want to take a little bit of time here, now that I've kind of given an open talk, to, opening talk to inspire you guys. I want to find out, why did you come? What do you want to get from the weekend? I want to hear it out loud. Who, who's got an answer? Go for it, Landon. Just to be surrounded with the energy. Okay. So you just want to be surrounded with the energy. <clears throat> That's not just the reason. Okay, what, what is the, that the main, is that the main reason? Okay, so I'm going to stay, stay with that. Give me another one. To get back into the momentum. To get back into the momentum. Okay, what else? Give me one over here. Back here with the, uh, the, hat, the beanie. I was fully embody uh, the highest version of myself. Fully embody the highest version of myself. Okay. Anything else you want to say to that? You started to say something else. It's like, um, yeah, like you talked about, it's just taking action like the one percent rule. So it's like figuring out Okay. Okay, cool. What do you got? Okay. Around anything specific? Both business and the work. Okay. Going through a divorce as we speak, so I want to get back in the back in the identity that I used to have before I lost myself in the relationship. Okay. And the identity I used to have. Do you know what that identity was? Fearless. Okay. So you were fearless with women before? And dating and or life and Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Go for it. Just want to challenge myself. Challenge yourself how? Uh, well just being around these guys, you know. It can be intimidating because a lot of them have done a lot more work than me. And you know, when you're out in the world you kind of feel like you've done more work than the average person, but to be around people who you think might be better than you. Yeah, you got to raise that bar all the time. It's a good answer. Um, okay, go for it, Michael. Oh, more grounding into more stepping into masculine and creating sexual tension. Stepping into masculine, creating sexual tension. Okay, what do you, what you got? Go for it, uh, Shobik, and then and then we'll go over here. I'm not sure what your name is. Go for it. Um, hey, Mark. Uh, love for learning and keep showing up. Love for learning and keep showing up. Okay, and Mark. See how far I'm willing to go for the things I'm determined to accomplish. Okay, awesome. Now I want to ask all of you guys I just asked. Are you are you getting what you want? Do any of you think you're actually getting what you want? Or is it a struggle? Okay, cool. Okay. None of you were very specific. There was a lot of good stuff in there. And this is the problem we had in the mastermind yesterday. After lunch, I literally asked them, because mo all but two of them didn't apply it. One of them forgot he applied it, and it took me a minute. Oh yeah, I did do it, and the exercise. And so I literally asked them after lunch, why are you here? If you didn't take the exercise serious, and you didn't go apply it at lunch, and you all just kind of hung out and got casual and bonded, and one of them said, well, I wanted to get around the guys and get into the, 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 the masculine energy again. Well, that's what you did at lunch. You hung out with the dudes. Oh, I wanted to, um, and there was a bunch of answers like you guys gave me. The one guy who applied it consciously remembered exactly what happened and came back with a, with a clear answer to the exercise. Oh, I came here to get, and he knew exactly why he was there. I came here to learn, I think, what was his answer? I'm going to have to paraphrase it. Because we were talking about success mindset and um, versus problem mindset, or f six, uh, like looking, being able to what's the answer, what's the oh, solution mindset versus uh, 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 versus problem mindset. And he said, I came here specifically to learn how to uh, create so the solution mindset in my company, so that I can teach everybody to be better at the solution mindset. Okay. 
And he's the only one that clearly applied the principles. Does this make sense to you guys? And that was so powerful when you think about it. Super powerful. Um, because he just launched a cryptocurrency and his, and his company is now worth uh, around $5 billion. He started from zero with Fearless. He launched two days ago. Okay? Do you see the difference in mentality? You, yeah, you need to know why are you here? Because if you don't have a solid purpose that drives you and something you're going for and something you want to create, why the fuck are you going to give a fuck about the exercises? There's got to be like, I want this answer. I'm going to the next level. I'm driving towards something big. And a lot of people are like, and this is the other thing that came up yesterday. A lot of people are very motivated why they're in pain, but as soon as the pain goes down a little bit, they lose their motivation. So what, what happens? You know, I haven't had a date in two years. I haven't had sex in years. I, I've never really dated anybody I care about. I'm gonna go to that fearless thing. Oh, the pain is driving me. I'm gonna work, work, work. And then you start getting a few dates and you used to have some sex and then you're like, this girl's cool. I'm not really crazy about her. And then the pain goes away and you, you settle and you find a girl that settles, and you're both settling. You're both <coughs> hanging out together. And now you're like, yeah, but I'm not motivated to go work harder because I don't feel the pain I felt before. Life is okay. And that's where you stay. How many, how many of you think you do that? You're guilty of that, that bullshit, okay? And so that's the next thing that comes up. I promise you, if you don't have something that drives you, that I am going to create, not out of pain, not out of fear, <coughs> but out of love, out of acceptance, out of courage, like I am driven to create this because it's bigger than I am, at least out of challenge, you will start settling. You'll reach a point where, eh, this is good enough. I'm, I met a cute girl, we can, you know, get to get, move in together and, We'll watch TV shows every night and drink our beer and get fat together and old. And, and we're both settling. Neither of us are passionate for each other, so we slowly each, each year have less and less sex. And now we're down to once a month, once every three months, once every six months, once a year. I haven't had sex in years. I tend to him and tend to have heard that story. I have one of my good friends. I hadn't talked to him in years since we were young. And I talked to him. Oh, I've been, I haven't had sex with my wife in three years. You know, and I was like, how the, what the, f why are you guys together? Oh, because we don't get a divorce because we're, you know, we're Christian, we're committed. And, but he's out trying to bang other women on the side because she won't fuck him. <laughs> and I'm like, you're doing this all wrong, dude. <laughs> you know. So, and then to him, his mind is justified. And I'm like, no, it's not. Because you're lying to yourself. You're not being honest. Okay, so... Who's got a goal that they're passionate about? It's like, I'm going to make this happen. What is it, Landon? For me, it's to, it's to me, something, you know, this is subjective, but to me, that is my 10. You know, that, I can, that I can, like you were saying, passionately have a really awesome relationship, long-term, committed relationship. See, that's very different than what you, what was the first thing you said when you said, why'd you come here this weekend? To be surrounded by the energy. Yeah, and you're, and do you, now, that's if you, if you, huh? <laughs> that's the macro objective. Why didn't you say that? So the, if you take the first, think about it, if he takes the first goal to be surrounded by the energy and applies all the principles based on that idea, versus I want to meet my 10, what is a 10 for me, and I want to have an awesome relationship, which one is going to make him take this shit more seriously? With one, one idea in mind. Yeah. And if you don't have that thing, like he knew it, but he didn't say it. So... Yeah. So it, it, you didn't say it. So your mind wasn't thinking about that. 
How often do you think about that goal? A lot. Tell me how much. Like every day? How? How do you think about it? What do you do? What's your process? Do you have it written down in your pocket? Do you have it written down in your pocket? Do you look at it at break and at lunch? I, I, I'll suggest a good thing to do is have shit written down and in your pocket and pull, imagine it's a year. This is something I learned from Mark Allen. He has his goals always. Guys went from zero to multimillionaire with all these businesses. He started with, at 30 with nothing. He had no money. He just got out of a monastery and had been meditating, I think Zen Buddhist meditation. Had nothing and he said as an experiment, I'm gonna try to build all these business, I'm gonna build a business on working 30 hours a week because I'm lazy. And, and he wrote down his goals, wrote down his little bit, and kept it in his pocket. And he said, I always have it in my back pocket everywhere I go. And I imagine it's absorbing through my ass, is what he would say, <laughs> you know. And so, um, and so I, uh, I have a lot of stuff that I'm working on. I, I meditate on every day. And if, if I, I can pull it out, read it, put it back away, pull it out, read it, put it back away. If it's not, I'd, every once in a while I touch it, which just reminds me of what, this is tangible. Well, on your phone is digital, right? So how often, do you, how, how often do you think about your goals when you touch your phone? But it, this, there's, this has no other representation than my goals, these notes. That phone means a million other things. So it's, it means your, all the people you talk to, the, the ways you distract yourself, Instagram, all the apps you use. This has none of that. This is also in the physical world. That's in the digital world. So we want our, you want your goals to manifest in the f digital world or the physical world? Physical world. So this actually moves it from the digital world when I write it with a pencil into the physical world. It's the first step. It is now on paper in the physical world. Okay? And if I carry it with me and look at it and it, you see it's a mnemonic that brings my mind right back, this is going to happen. Over and over and over again. That's why I, I, I recommend journaling so much and not putting stuff in your, in your phone. Your phone is great for notes and even like a backup of your goals. But to have your actual goals written down on paper somewhere and print it out, put the effort it takes to move it and have it and keep it with you. It, and some people, there's, there's people out there that literally rewrite their goals every day. They believe it's that. Hand rewrite them every day. They start from the beginning, write them again every day. That's powerful too. There's one Korean billionaire, Mark uh, Allen references, that says he would meditate and read his goals every day for one hour in the morning. First thing, read his goals and meditate on them every day. And look at them and contemplate and contemplate. One hour minimum every day, worth billions. How many of you do this type of stuff? Do you every day for an hour? You do, oh, she does it, awesome. Yeah, it's that important. Yeah. Well, all the most successful people in the world, they are relentless about being focused on what they're creating. Was Mark Zuckerberg relentless about Facebook? Who, who saw the, the, the whole story? Like Mark Zuckerberg had one goal for Facebook, get it to 100 million subscribers in the beginning. And everything he did, he had it on his desk in big letters in front of his face. And everything he did was to accomplish that goal. That's the story I heard. Every, he said, he come to him with all these ideas. If, does it help that goal? Does it help that goal? Does it help that goal? Do you see what I mean? Okay, what about um, Elon Musk? How obsessed is he? And I'm talking about a, a crazy obsession with getting to Mars. Obsessed. Huh? Obsessed. Yeah. See, would you say Elon Musk is, wants to get to Mars? Yeah. <laughs> nope. On, I, I would say he does not want to get to Mars. He has chosen. He's getting to Mars. It's not a want. In his mind, he's there. It's happened, and the physical world is catching up with what he's created in his mind. It's not a want anymore. It's a choice. It's a decision. We are going to Mars. People say, oh, you can't get through the radiation belt. You'll, people will die. I'll figure it out. He doesn't let that shit bother him. Right? So there's a difference between a want and a choice. You can feel that people that want shit sit around and think about it and don't take action. People that have chosen shit take action. Notice when you want a glass of water and you're sitting in front of the TV or you need to go to the bath, want to go to the bathroom, you don't go. Like, so you think about it, you have to take a, I kind of have to pee, but I don't want to get up and I'm tired and you're sitting there. You reach that point 
where you have to fucking pee and it becomes a choice because you're gonna piss your pants and then you get the, you get the fuck up, don't you? There's a different energy involved in that. Do you guys understand what I mean? You need to get that same feeling with every goal you have. Every goal needs that sense of urgency. That's gonna, I, this has already happened in my mind and now the physical world's catching up to it. The physical world is a printout of my internal image. The physical world is in the past. This is already, this energetic world that I'm picturing on this paper, this has already happened and now I'm getting the physical world to catch up to it. Do you see the difference in mentality? It's a completely different mentality. Yeah. So let's hear it again. What are, what are some of you guys, what do you guys want out of this weekend? Why are you here? What are you crank? What are you getting? Go for it, Aaron. I'm here to be more comfortable taking the leaps of faith and doing things that I'm, and choosing to do things that I may not be ready to do. Okay. Do you have, here's what I want. Do you have anything specific? Yeah, I want to be a blogger. So why didn't you say that? I'm here to become an awesome blogger and to, and to take, to learn these principles to apply to my blogging. I want to have a blog with X amount of followers. Do you see how you, what you said was kind of ambiguous? Yeah. Again, the second thing Landon said was not ambiguous. It was pretty damn clear. Okay, what else? who else? Somebody raised their hand. Uh, give, give me another one, Michael. Yeah, give me another. Give it to me now. Go. I have a million dollars and a fucking hot ass girlfriend. Okay, good. Much better. Now you can start adding dates. You can start adding more tension with time. Like that's going to happen by X date. Not in two weeks, not in one year, because one year always is always one year. Six months from now, one, if you're saying one year, it'll still be a year. So you got to, you know, see what I mean? Okay, go for it. I want to be able to get any bill that I want. Okay. It's a lofty goal. I don't know of anybody that can do that, but I, as a goal, I get it. <laughs> but you can get it. You can get really amazing with women. Yes. Huh. I want to create a multi-million dollar business and have an abundance of high-quality beautiful in my life. Okay. What does a multi-million dollar business mean? Two million? Um, start with ten million. Okay. So I want a business. I I am choosing. I have. I have a ten million dollar. I'm choosing, I'm allowing, I'm accepting, I'm loving, I am the owner of, which is, right, a, a, a multi-million dollar, uh, a, a ten million dollar or more business, right? So we're just, we're just rewording stuff a little bit. Go for it, Trey. I want my perfect girl, I want to make a million dollars cash, and I want to walk through the world here free. Okay, so now you're going to have to move that from want to, to minimum of choice. Choice is encourage. Accept. So say it again. So you can say, I choose, I allow, I accept, I love, I am. I choose to have my perfect girl. I choose to make million dollars cash. And I choose to walk through the world carefully. Does that feel more powerful? Yeah. Now take out two. I choose having. I choose having my perfect girl. See how you just lit up more? Yeah. Okay, keep going. I choose making a million dollars cash and I choose walking through the world carefully. How does that feel? It feels... Can you guys feel, feel the difference in them? Yeah. 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 Two puts a little bit into the future. And that's okay. But eventually you want to resolve that projection into the future. Anything that's projected in the future is hard to get to the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is very literal. And it gives you what, you, what, it gives you what you're being and not what you want. So if you're wanting, if you're saying, I want a million dollars, it will give you more wanting of a million dollars. <coughs> It won't give you the million dollars. It'll give you the experience of wanting a million dollars. It takes what you're saying super fucking literal. Okay? And the emotional inflection you're using too. So you've got to get the right words that cause the right emotional inflection. Go for it. I want happiness, fulfillment, raising the bar, raising the standards, and learning something new every day. Do you have that? Yeah, that's my goal. But you already have it, right? Or do you? Do you feel like you have that? Yeah, I feel like I have it already because you have to feel like you have it already. Okay. What would that look like in the physical world? Um, doing something new, trying something new, like maybe I'm not. Like what? Like, is there something specific? Like, I want to learn to parasail. I want to, I'm... Yeah, I'm going to play board. I do a lot of acting on the... Okay. Okay, so now we're getting more specific. I, I, I uh, instead of choose, wanting, 
I choose having a life of creativity, uh, uh, experiencing amazing things like acro yoga. You know, you start to put those specifics down. They add more tension, right? Choosing, there's nothing wrong with choosing being happy. I think it's a great goal. And I think that's one of the most powerful goals because Lester Levinson's first goal is I want to be happy now. And, that, and that's what he focused on. But then he, to create that goal, he looked at something very specific. He de first determined what happiness was. And he figured out that happiness was created by loving other people unconditionally. So then he set out to love everybody and everything unconditionally. And he would practice relentlessly. If he felt a discord between anybody, he would work until he got created love for that person. And they, or a noise, like people, he was in New York and you hear all the cars honking and it'd get him annoyed, work on having love for the cars. And he did this relentlessly 24 hours a day until he experienced this sense that he was starting to love everything. And that's how he moved to his enlightenment. So he had a specific action that he chose that was going to create his happiness, which was love for everything and everyone. Even the people in his life he most hated, he worked and sat and meditated until he could get love for them. The hardest one he said was he had, this girl left him at a young age. And, uh, and he'd never had a good relationship since because he was so bitter over the relationship. She left him for this guy he hated. And so he hated the guy and hated the girl. And, and so first thing he started to do, he said, the hardest one was when I started to say, can I have love for them two together? If they're going to be happier with each other than with me, can I have love for them? And he said, oh, I went into complete revulsion to the idea. And he had to work to get a sense of love for them. And then he took it a step further. He said he started picturing them having sex together, having a great time together, being happy together, and he wanted to have love for them, having sex and orgasms together and all that. And he said, I finally did it, and that was the hardest release I, I had ever done because he was so angry at her. And he finally reached this point, and he says that one really set him free. So do you see the specifics in that? So we want to get out of want, get into choice, get into acceptance, get into... Uh, a specific, this is how, this is what I'm gonna do to create what I want in the physical world. And when I see it coming back to me in the physical world, now I know I've got it. You guys see what I'm talking about? Okay, we're, at, we're out of time, but go ahead, one last question. Uh, no, it's not a question. I'm choosing to be more integrative with myself mm -hmm. and, um, and to be able to be okay and accept myself whether I have to go or not, just be okay. Okay. But that's what you're going to get. I'm going to be okay. You see, you see the tone you used too? It was like, ah, eh, everything's okay. But that's not what you really want, is it? And so you got to figure out what you want, then move it to a choice. What do you really want? Because nobody wants, yeah, I just want to be okay. The, that was even your gesture. You tossed your head to the side like that. Yeah, that's, I want to be okay. That doesn't sound satisfying to me. That is not going to drive me. I'm not going to get up every day with the sense of passion saying, I've chosen this. I'm creating this because, I, because it excites me, because it turns me on. Lester was turned on to have love for everybody. He was passionate about this idea, right? So what do you really want? What turns you on? And what will that, what will confidence give you? So now we're getting closer, talk to anybody. Why do you want to talk to anybody? Because I want to be able to uh, create a product that I have in my mind. Create a product you have in your mind? What's the product? See, he's starting to light, he's smiling now. He's starting to come out of him. It's something that I, that I've always had in my mind and I... Oh, now we're getting there. We're getting digging down. Do you want to say it out loud or do you want to keep it yourself? I want to keep it to myself. Okay. So that's what you have to get specific about and how that's going to affect the world and then start creating images and seeing that go out so that your body can get excited about something for real. So you're getting, you're starting to bounce more, your body's moving more because energy is rising up in your body getting more ticks because now we're moving in the right direction. That's the direction you got to move though and work through all that stuff because saying, I want to be okay is not going to get you that. 
And all of you are doing this to some degree. Most people, you get what you picture in your mind and the bulk of the planet is choosing to be, they're trying, their goal is to be okay. It's not to be awesome. It's not to be exceptional. People like Elon Musk are choosing to be exceptional. People like Richard Branson are choosing to be exceptional. People like, um, uh, I can never remember his last name, Vitalik, they, the guy who created Ethereum. He's like, he's, he's not even 30 yet. The motherfuckers worth so much money. It's, and he's, he doesn't even give a fuck about the money. He, he wanted to create this thing, right? He's not competing with anybody. He's just out doing his thing. And that's why he, he keeps succeeding because he has a passion for what he's doing and wants to see it come into the physical world or in a sense the, the, the blockchain world. But you guys see what I'm talking about. When you can find that thing, you'll wake up every day and carry it, have it on you, see it, dream about it, get turned on for it, get into cap for it, for all of you that know what cap is, courage, acceptance, love, peace, and you get into that cap energy for it every day, that's when your life is gonna change. That's when you're going to get motivated. Okay.